Welcome, everyone, to Winning in the Shadows, NFL Week 6. The show is off the rails already. Uh, Corbin is laughing because the code word of the day is nail. If you don't have a hot take, just type the word nail in the comments section. I didn't know this is Corbin's favorite part of the show is the, the code word of the day in the comments section. So we're going to break down props and parlay pieces uh, for NFL Week 6. Let's get into it. As we, as you guys know, uh, we always take a look at the weather. Not too much. Um uh, low chance for showers in London. That's like oh, amazing. It's not, it's not low. It's going to rain. <laughs> no, <it's> not. <laughs> just ignore it. It's going to rain. Okay, rain in London. Just playing on it. Uh, Houston and uh, New England, it will rain Sunday afternoon. The timing isn't set in stone. So we'll just say scattered showers are possible. Arizona and Green Bay, looks like there is going to be some moisture there. And then Cincinnati at the Giants, scattered showers possible. Uh, we will not break down the weather in any of the dome games. So, <laughs> uh, all right, guys, let's get into our uh, our uh, props here that we have up. We're recording this on Saturday afternoon, so if breaking news happens Sunday morning, apologize. Um, I put up the Giants breakdown video, and I was like, oh, I think Malik Neighbors is going to play. And like twenty minutes later, after he uploaded, like Malik Neighbors is out. Okay, uh, so so we'll get after it. Uh, hit the like button, guys, if you could. Really appreciate it. And uh, leave us your best bet in the comments section. If you don't have a best bet, just type the word nail. N-A-I-L. Uh, it really helps us out. Let's wager talk. No, we're doing a good job for you guys. All right, let's start with the passing uh, passing yards and passing touchdowns. Corbin, Jaguars and Bears, you got any, um, got any quarterback props you like with this one? No, I was – it's one of those weeks I, I kind of like – if it wasn't Caleb Williams, I'd like the totals to go over versus the Jags. I just, I can't trust him. I know I talked about him last week and he ended up having a big game out of nowhere. I can't do it. I managed to cash on the Trevor Lawrence props last week, even though I didn't particularly like him, but the numbers were all there. It kind of feels like he's going to regress back to how he was doing before that game. It's kind of, it's one of those games I don't quite know what to expect. So I'm just going to pass on the passing props. Jim? Uh, under one and a half touchdowns for Trevor Lawrence. I think the the Bears uh, are going to really clamp down on uh, what's their what's their rookie receiver Brian Robinson. What's his yeah what Brian Robinson right? Jr. Uh, I think the 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 jig is up and everyone knows about him. And we've seen Trevor struggle against high end pass defenses, and that's what the Bears are. I so wanted to take Caleb Williams over one and a half t- do passing too. touchdowns. The Jaguars, <laughs> their secondary is really awful. Um, this is kind of one of the themes that we're seeing right now is there are just some secondaries that you circle and you fade them every single week. Mm-hmm. I couldn't get there just because it's overseas. Caleb Williams, rookie quarterback, this is new for him, and the Jags are completely used to this. So if I'm just trying to really nitpick plays to lay off of, I can't get to the window with Caleb Williams just because I don't know how it's going to go with his, uh, with his overseas trip. Texans and the Patriots, Drake May. Drake May getting the start. Uh, you sound yeah. so excited with that, Andy. I've just got to say, you sounded so enthusiastic. Uh, this is right in your wheelhouse, though. This is the kind of I like you the like. <laughs> you, uh, how did I know that? Know that was coming. Mm-hmm. I like the over. He can throw the ball long. Jacoby Brissett can't. Like that. Like this is the this has been the easiest passing offense to defend. In the league, it just has. It's it's Jacoby Brissett, awesome guy. Um, but I, like, but he, he's just not. He can't throw the ball deep. Drake, May, they're gonna let him throw the. They're gonna let him throw the he's ball. He's gonna deep. have to. He better yeah, get rid of that ball with that offensive line. I, Jimmy, you with me? One hundred sixty-four and a half over. It's way low. Way low. Like why? Just because he's a rookie, he can't throw for one sixty-four. Do we realize how low one sixty-four really is? He's going to have to get the ball out of his hands. I expect a ton of targets to Antonio Gibson. Checkdowns, get it out quick. I think he could easily go over 168. 28 and a half uh, pass attempts. Uh, is, what's his completion? 17 and a half. I'm that, looking. I'd be worried about the attempts because that would, line's bad. <laughs> I, would, I, I, would, I would worry about that too. Yeah. Um, to throw an interception is minus 150. You got to like that one. That's more in my will. I'll take, I'll, I'll take that as opposed to hoping he, he throws it. <laughs> I, I I love these rookie quarterbacks uh, when they come in in the middle of the season. I love backup quarterbacks when they come in. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's just no film on them, and you get this ridiculously low number. We Andy Dalton, the first week he played, that was I think he went over his passing total by like a hundred yards. I just think they're going to mm-hmm. let him 
let him open up the offense a little bit more. So, uh, Corbin, you like anything with CJ Stroud or these numbers pretty dialed in? I, I think they're dialed in. I, I I like Stroud to have another good game, but the problem is I think they could be streets ahead, and I really don't think they're going to need to do an awful lot. Nico Collins being out as well, he's been the number one guy. Just a few factors, why bother? So, Command- I like the next play if you want me to go for for that. Go so for it. Jaden Dan- Jaden Daniels over two twenty five and a half. I really like this play. This is the, my favorite passing one I think on the board. So. I'm expecting the Commanders to be competitive, if not behind, against against the Ravens. The Ravens are the second worst versus the pass and the best versus the run. All of that kind of set up, so I think Daniels is going to have to throw the ball to win here. Allen is the only person to go under this total. Even Minshew went over this total. Even Minshew managed to get over this. And Allen had no receivers that game kind of explains why he didn't go over. It's such a low total at 225 still that that's where I kind of like. So I could not agree more. This is a, these are two terrible secondaries. Mm -hmm. Um, I would look at Lamar Jackson uh, over his passing touchdowns. The commanders don't give out. They're bad. They don't give up a ton of yards, but 11 touchdown uh, catches they've given up. I'm with you. Jaden Daniels, over uh, his passing and Lamar, you know, over his touchdown. It's going to be a really nice same game parlay kind of opportunity just with the quarterbacks. If you take like Jane Daniels, a little bit of an alt line um, yeah. over with that. So, Jim, you like any of these quarterbacks? Uh, I like the Lamar Jackson over one and a half touchdowns. Uh, I think we're going to have a lot of sweaty palms come the third quarter when Derrick Henry hasn't scored yet. Oh, yeah. With okay. that ridiculous number they put him at. It just smells like the week where, oh, it's easy. Like, just play Derrick Henry every week. And, you know, Lamar's going to run for one and throw for three. And Henry's going to have – he'll be sitting on the bench in the fourth and Justice Hill will be out there running if they're up big. And just – it smells. It just smells. It was like McCaffrey when he was my, uh, minus two. 65. So I like Lamar to throw the ball this week. I think it's the easiest path to victory for them. Um, yeah, it's, it should be maybe Zay flowers get right game. We'll look at his number when we get to uh, receiving, uh, Browns in the Eagles, Jim, Deshaun Watson, 189. I know the Eagles defense isn't that good. They've had a week off. I, I'm not playing over on Deshaun. No, Watson. I can't do it. I, I wanted to take, well, you saw what he did against the commanders. Come on. I mean, <laughs> wasn't you can't, you can't throw against that team. I don't know what to do. It's just, it's bad. It's bad, man. It's bad. And I know that they came out and they backed him. He's our quarterback and all that stuff. It makes you wonder if in the third quarter, look, that decision did not come from Kevin Stefanski. That came from ownership. It makes you wonder if the third quarter Stefanski's just like, all right, I've seen enough. I don't care if it gets me fired. You know, Winston, get in there. (laughs) So (laughs) if anything, I'm still looking at an under. I think the Eagles, the Eagles secondary is horrible. Um, The numbers don't show. We were just talking about how, numbers and rankings don't really show the game scripts. The Eagles secondary is bad, but I just, he doesn't want to let the ball go. It's the weirdest thing. He just, he doesn't trust his eyes. And when you have a quarterback that doesn't trust their eyes, not doing, if anything, I'm looking at Watson interception. That's where I would go with it. And honestly, you could probably take Hertz too, because he's been tossing it up all season as well. Yeah. Hertz has certainly been, uh, been been prone. I I got a couple passing or uh, receiving ones. Uh, I like in this one. Kind of stay away from the quarterbacks. Corbin, you like Hertz or Watson? I like Hertz to go under his total here. So we know that the Browns are a far better pass defense than run defense. He's gone under in two of the four games so far. But the two that he didn't one was the shootout versus the Packers, and the other one was a huge loss uh, last time out to the Bucks. Uh, and the Browns have held every quarterback under this total so far this year, including Dak and Daniels. So worth noting, I don't, Hertz just doesn't look right to me. There's something still not right there. I just, yeah, I'd lean the under quite honestly. Yeah, it gets us two big weapons back, but boy, if they get a lead, they're just going to be running the ball. Um, exactly. Cardinals and Packers, Corbin, uh, your team, what do you think about uh, Kyler Murray and Jordan Love? So. I like both teams to run the ball here. I'm not so much invested in the passing props this week. I Again, there's a few problems. Uh, who knows if Christian Watson's going to play this week. Uh, we didn't do injuries this week, but uh, I think Dobbs is back. We'll talk about him in a bit. 
but I, yeah, I, I feel like it's more going to be a running week for both. So, Jim, you like any of these quarterbacks? Pass, pass. <laughs> uh, Colts and Titans, yikes. Two quarterbacks can't even get to 200 yards on either of their props. Uh, I'm so taking Richardson under uh, if I have to play anything in this one. Coming off an injury, I'm not sure there's a guarantee finishes the game. Titan secondary has been better, and the guy just doesn't throw a lot, kind of dependent on the big play. We know they have big play ability, but I, I don't know. I, 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 I'm not taking an over on either one of these guys. Corbin, do you got any thoughts on Levis and Richardson? No, I wanted to fade the Colts again. I mentioned it most weeks, but I, I just can't do it with Levis. I just, I can't just save yourself the pain and just move on. Quite honestly, I agree. What's that? Interceptions. Yeah, I. You know, Richardson Levis inter- is on the field. <laughs> get ready. <laughs> He's going to give you one. Give it. Get ready. <laughs> Buccaneers and the Saints. Uh, our boy Baker Mayfield uh, taking on Spencer Rattler. Jim, you're saying you still like Baker Mayfield over uh, uh, one and a half touchdowns, right? I still do. Uh, they've just shown that they're not going to commit to the run down at the goal line. Uh, I think this is a team who really learned what their identity is, and they're going to stick with it. Like, they're not trying to force the run game. And the run game has gotten pretty good with Bucky Irvin running the ball and that just not being white all the time. Um, they've, it's been serviceable. Just Spencer Rattler is probably going to give the Bucks an extra possession here or there. Uh, we might get two extra possessions with a short field with Tampa. And we've seen Baker is looking to throw. He just is. If, it, if anything, he's looking to run himself. I'm more worried about him running, <laughs> rushing a touchdown than I am Bucky Irving. Uh, I know Lattimore Evans, the big rivalry, but God, this Bucks team has weapons, man. Not only Goblin, but Kate Otten is becoming a really good safety blanket for Baker Mayfield. So I think they have places to go with the football. So I like the over 231. I think he gets a couple big plays, and I like the over one and a half a lot. Yeah, Rattler at 188 and a half. I it's it I don't know. It's kind of surprising that he's like well over 20 yards more than Drake May. Um I guess they're saying that the offense is just a lot better for the Saints. I guess they got better weapons, but um, I don't know. What's your take on Rattler, Jim? I think he goes over. I, I think we see points in this game, man. Yeah. Um, you know, if the Saints are smart, they're going to keep this kind of to what Rattler knows, which is a bit of a college-style offense. And if that's the case, it's, all right, take your shots, and we'll tell you when we're going to take our shots. Other than that, get it to Kamara in space. Uh, you're not going to run the ball against the Bucks. You're going to have to throw. So I, I don't. It, we got to realize how low 188 yards really is, and we've seen this in a lot of these standalone games that the quarterback only has 30 yards at the end of the first quarter, and this number drops down to 150. Mm. You're like, how do they not throw for 120 more yards? <laughs> There's still three quarters left. Yeah. So yeah, maybe that's a way to look at it. If uh, they go three and out, and the number drops on Rappler, Rattler, maybe you could play it then. Uh, Steelers and Raiders, Corbin, it's the quarterback rivalry we've all been waiting for. Aiden O'Connell versus Justin Fields. We had this circled uh, before. Here we go, here we go again. Oh, oh, just a run yes, of games where the quarterback's numbers aren't even close to 200 yards. Can you take either one of these guys to go over? No. Again, again <laughs> it's just like we talk about plays throughout this that we have strong opinions. You just, it's one of those, I, I can't have a strong opinion about Aiden O'Connell. At all, what? either way. Like, who knows what's going to happen? So, I can, I can. Oh, I like the over on O'Connell. Okay, I really do. Uh, the Steelers are are missing Alex Highsmith and Nick Herbig. Their only pass rusher left is T.J. Watt, and I know T.J. Watt can do it all by himself. <laughs> However, this is a YOLO, Aiden O'Connell. Like, what does he care? He's going to let this lose to Jacoby Myers and Brock Bowers. And if he throws a pick, who cares? <laughs> I just don't think he cares. And a we saw Yolo, last year. A what YOLO Aiden O'Connell. That's what's the quote he got of the day. Get that on a t shirt. <laughs> Pierce is getting fired soon. What does he have to lose? Let it loose. So he might just go for it. And I think he could hit this 187. That's great. You're braver than I am. Um, I'm not uh, betting it. I'm just like, no, I'm not betting it, but I like it. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, up next, we have Bo Nix versus Justin Herbert. 
Uh, I will read you these numbers. 179, 125, 130, and 144. Uh, that's Justin Herbert's passing totals for this year, and they got him at 183 and a half, and now he's going up against the Broncos. I, this is a really, really low number, but it's a Chargers team that's just not throwing the ball very much. I mean, his completions, 16, 12, 14, and 17. I mean, he's he, mm-hmm. 27, 18, 20, and 26 attempts. This is, we know what the, we know what they want to do. The Chargers want to do. Um, you know, they're starting to get more healthy with the wide receivers. But I mean, Patrick Sertan's got to be licking his chops at at. Uh, at the, this is not a scary, you know, <laughs> wide receiving. Correct. I think this is Chargers trying to run the ball 40 times. Um, I'd I'd take unders on Justin Herbert. Um, because I'm not really sure that Bo Nix is going to be able to put up a ton of points to where the Chargers need to get away. Uh, Corbin, you got any thoughts? You nailed it. Everything I had you just said. Okay. Um, yep. Herbert, Herbert under is a lean, so I think they're going to run the ball more than try and throw it here. So um, Let me look up the pass attempts. What is what is Herbert's pass attempts here? Uh, yeah, tw- 28 and a half. That, that would be no. season high. Mm-hmm. God, that just feels like a... a a ton. So if, when if these they, two teams get together, they're, they're not high scoring affairs. Yeah. And it's, not, this is a division. I game expect both defenses to be on top here. Yes. So. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I would, I would totally, it, if the chargers get up by just by seven, they're, <laughs> that's going to be tough for Bonix to, to come back uh, from. I, I think Bonix is decent, but uh, yeah, trying to come from behind and, you know, Harbaugh is going to run, run, run. Uh, Falcons and the Panthers, Dalton versus Co- uh, Cousins. Panthers are just absolutely terrible against the the pass. Uh, I was dead wrong on Cousins last week. He looked great. Uh, I take those over his yards and his touchdowns. Uh, Jim, you got any thoughts on Dalton and Cousins? What did they put Dalton's completions at this week? I, I didn't look at it yet, but that's right. Look I'm here. looking at Dalton. Uh, completions or attempts. What do we got? So... Uh, Dalton is twenty, only twenty two and a half. Kirk Cousins twenty three and a half. I mean, you have to think that the Panthers are going to be down because Kurt looked really good, and like you said, the Panthers can't stop the pass. So, you know, I do to expect a decent game from Chuba, um, but we might get into third, fourth quarter, and he's got to throw it. So twenty two and a half, I think, is still playable. Um, only reason he didn't hit this last week is because they decided to trot Bryce out there to throw the ball into the dirt a couple times instead of Andy. So <laughs> instead, instead I was of- furious. I needed two more, two more completions. And he, it's, the uh, uh, I, that's where I've been looking with uh, Andy Dalton. This season is his completions. Um, uh, Corbin, you got any thoughts on Dalton and cousins? Uh, well, I have it coming up in a alt play Dalton, but okay. I like him. I like him under his normal total. I the Falcons are eighth best versus the pass. He's gone under the last two. It's like the teams have started figuring him out. He's really not that hard to prepare for. I'm expecting both teams. I think both teams are going to run the ball quite honestly. And the only quarterback to go over this total versus the Falcons was Carr, and he only just went over. So I don't think Dalton's going over this total. Lions and the Cowboys, Dak Prescott and Goff. Man, Dak Prescott, 282 and a half. Boy, that sounds like a really, really high number. Uh, I think all I think most of these numbers are pretty much dialed in. I can't mm-hmm. bet any of them. Jim, do you yeah, like any of the quarterback? Same. Yeah, Corbin? Same. All right. Bengals and the Giants. I was waiting for this. And I got to tell you, Daniel Jones at plus 170. It's a pretty crazy number, isn't it? Against the Bengals secondary, who's awful. Mm-hmm. Um, if this is you know plus one ten, eh, I don't know, but man, plus one seventy to fade the, this Bengals secondary, Corbin, am I crazy? You're not crazy, but I don't know. I don't know if Jones is the one to to do it. Um, I guess. I guess the price makes it inviting, but again, I feel like I have stronger stronger players elsewhere than. All right. Trying to rely on Jones to throw the ball. I think you could take both of them. I think you put a bigger bet on Burrow over one and a half and might sprinkle on Jones and you might get away with both of them. I hate the 190 on Burrow is the problem. Yeah. First first, uh, prop I looked at this week was this. Was it? I was like, ah, they're on to it. (laughs) Yeah, they figured that one out. (laughs) Yes. Thought we'd sneak it. 
Uh, let's move to rushing props. Uh, we'll start with Jags and the Bears. Ooh, yeah. Kind of interesting what's going on here in the backfield here with uh, with Etienne and Bigsby. Uh, it's a tough defense to go up against. Um, I don't know. I don't like any of these these rushing props, Corbin. Oh, I do. You just mentioned it. I love Big Speed. Over, okay. It was that 39 and a half when I wrote this. So the three games, he's basically played in three games. There's a couple where he had, I think he must have been injured because he had nothing, and one where he had like two carries. So the three that he's played, he's had 73, 90, and 101 with long, uh, long carries of 65 and 58. Even without those long runs, he still goes over this total. The Bears are sixth best versus the pass, but 18th versus the run. Again, I've mentioned Jags and Trevor Lawrence have had issues throwing the ball outside of last week all season. I think they're going to rely on the running game. ETN is banged up. He's had injuries, mispractices. He came out of the game a couple of weeks ago. I think Bigsby's slowly taking over, and that seems like a really low total to me. So that's one of my favorite rushing plays on the board. Nice. Jim? Uh, what's Swift's rushing and receiving? Ooh, rushing and receiving uh, is going to be... Jim's a huge fan of this. You love oh, this one. Yeah. 77 and a half. Hey, dead on love it. about love with it. Cook. Yeah? Love it. Okay. I'm, 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 against these bad pass defenses, teams still try to keep the the, the running backs involved. This, is, this has been great with James Cook in Buffalo. Same thing. Not a ton of weapons, but still want to keep the running back involved. I very much could see him in the passing game. And look, with DeAndre Swift, there's always a chance that he could break a 30-yard screenplay, and you're sitting pretty early in the first quarter for the rest of the game. He's going to get the lion's share, I believe, too. Uh, do you like? Uh, we'll move on to the Texans and Patriots. Like Antonio Gibson, 69 and a half. 100. percent Yeah. Where uh, else are they going to go with the football? And I just think Drake May is going to get it out of here. No Ramondre Stevenson. It's, yeah. it, it, where are the weapons on this team? Uh, well, they're on other teams <laughs> where they passed on all the wide receivers that they could have had on all. Of them. Um, yeah, they don't even have rushing props for the Texans. Uh, Corbin, do you like any anything? Except for Stroud, obviously. No, I I do want a Tex. I do want to see the Texans running back props when they come out. That was one I was waiting for. So, okay, we'll wait and see on those. Uh, Commanders and Ravens, Jim. You were talking about Derrick Henry. Uh, that this touchdown prop is <laughs> like begging to bite mm -hmm. everybody. Um, you, you, any thoughts on the rushing attack? Are we we looking at Justice Hill? Yeah, I mean, we can see the yards. <sighs> they just. I've, I've tried to get on Justice Hill. He just really is not getting the carries. Um, I wonder if this game just becomes the Jaden Daniels and Lamar Jackson show. Where yeah. they're just going to try to one-up one each other. I mean, if, if you're Jaden Daniels, is there any other game that you're more hyped about than playing against? Yeah, the right, they're, the like, teams are the like right next wall, to each right? other with Washington yeah. and Baltimore. And like, who's the quarterback you idled coming? It's it's got to be Lamar. I mean, come on, it, same style. So, I actually think you could maybe take both of these guys over their rushing, and it just might hit. I just I worry with the Derrick Henry consistency. He is not going to score a touchdown and run for 100 yards every game. He's just not. So, I, I have nothing in my account on this game. That's just just some thoughts. So Justice Hills rushed for 22, 33, 18, and 17 uh, in the last three games. Yeah, you're right. Five carries, four carries, five carries, four carries. So it's been pretty consistent. We know what he's going to get. That's my Just, second favorite rushing play on the board. What is it's it? Justice Hill? Justice Hill. Okay. It's such a low total. He has so much speed. They, they, He comes in, he only needs a couple of carries to go over. It doesn't... You talk about he's only getting four or five. He only, that's all he needs. That's why the, that's why the total is at fourteen or fifteen. If he was getting more carries, then his total is going to be in the mid twenties. That's I think it's I think it's great, quite honestly. How about this three and a half? I know it's minus one fifty five. Got that in his last four games. Yeah, that's you one carry per game, quarter. Yeah. yeah, like Derrick Henry needs a breather. Comes in for a couple carries. Um, yeah, I could see that. I could see that one. I kind of like that one. Might, might have to revisit that. Uh, up next, we have the Browns and the Eagles. Uh, Saquon's 85 and a half. I really hate taking huge numbers like that, but mm -hmm. man, I like, I like Saquon to be a big, big part of the offense. What do you think, Corbin? 
I like, I think Barkley's going to have a field day. Whether the total's kind of in the right place. So that's why I'll mention one of my favorite parlay pieces is him to have the most rushing yards in this game. At, it's only, it's minus 320. So you're obviously you're going to have to put it with something, but I don't see who get, I don't see who gets close to him in this, this game to beat him. You know, probably not too worried about Deontay Foreman. No, Barkley's had, <laughs> Barkley's had 80 plus rushing yards in every single game. Ford hasn't gone over 64 yet. Like I just, I, yeah. I think Barkley's going to comfortably have the most rushing yards in this game. You could easily use an alt line as well. I just, I don't think anyone gets close to him. So, Jim? Uh, no, nothing. Uh, Cardinals and the Packers. Corbin, coming to you. You know your Packers. Oh, quite well. yes. I, <laughs> rushing. I, ha- I have three day. rushing plays on this game. <laughs> I do too. Um, <laughs> this is great. This is my favorite <laughs> rushing play of the week. We're, yep. We'll have a little game of bingo, and I, I'll, <laughs> I'll right. say it and you say it. Uh, so James Conner, over 70 and a half is one of them. I yes, like him please. to go over his normal rushing, his longest, and he'll score a touchdown. I like. Mm. I don't need to overcomplicate <laughs> that. Over. So Conner's over in three of his last for the only to- time he didn't was against the Lions. We know how good their rush defense is. Ours is pants. Awful. Don't need to <laughs> overcook it. We are awful. Um, he's g- <laughs> gone over this uh, longest total only twice. The Packers are still not good versus the run. Don't need to do anything with that. Reed, over five and a half. Over in four of five. Jacobs just isn't getting it done this year. He has so much so much speed, and the only game he didn't go over Reed was against the Vikings when we were down horrendously bad. Kind of explains that one. And then my favorite one of the three is Kyler Murray over 32 and a half rushing. Uh, so he's had 83, 45, 59, and 57, and three. The three came in uh, in the big loss to the commander, so kind of makes sense. We do we do awful against mobile quarterbacks, <laughs> awful. Um, Richardson and Hertz went over this total against us, and I can also see his longest rush of 14 and a half, him going over that quite honestly easily. So, yeah, hopefully Love Jim took some of those on the bingo card. <laughs> You got Jim. one. I got one. Um, I agree with you on James Conner. Well, two, I, I agree with you on his total, and I agree with you that he's going to score a touchdown. Yes. Um, I'm actually looking at Josh Jacobs' carries, and Ooh. I'm also looking at Josh Jacobs' to score. I think this game screams same game parlay for rushing. Mm. This, this just screams a lower alt total for both of these running backs. Like, if you uh, both of them to, to rush for 50 yards. Uh, both of them, the score, I think, is on the table. I expect the Packers to really put a whooping on the Cardinals offensively, personally. Um, I just don't think this Cardinals defense is any good whatsoever. And they're coming off this big win. It, it Going to Green Bay, they're not in a dome. It's going to be raining. It's a running game game. It just is. So uh, what's uh, Jacobs' carries? Last 16 and a half. They're both at 16 and a half. Yeah, I think you could even take both. I just think this ends up to be a sloppy running game, Connor and him. Um, I could see the Murray props coming through. It's not really where I was looking, so I, I really don't have an opinion, yay, yay or nay. But I, I think both of these starting running backs get work in this game. I have a question for you, Jay. It's something yeah. I do, but I don't know if you guys are fans of it. So you talked about you think they're both going to have running games in the same game parlay. Do you ever look to go all up to get – Plus money. I used to do it with Kamara on his receptions and ladder it up. Would you? Are there any kind of opportunities here to take both of them to do more? Get a hundred than... yards or so. Wow. <laughs> that'd, yeah. be a, that'd be a great number. I'll tell you that much. Um, if I'm going to ladder anything up personally, I don't link it with the second player. It would mm. be the player. I, I I wouldn't like the risk. I I've done that with David Montgomery, who we'll get to. Um, that's, right. a good, that's a good thought, Corbin. I like it. I like where you're going with it. It might we very well could see a hundred rushing yards for both of these guys. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh Colts and the Titans. Uh no Anthony Richardson uh rushing. Wonder if wonder if the books are like, uh last time they ran him, he got hurt. Maybe they don't run him anymore. Um, I don't know. Pollard at 63 and a half. Feel like feel like this was a popular play trying to fade the Colts. But man, that's a big number for for Tony Pollard. I, I will you, never trust Tony Pollard with that kind of number. Yeah, me either. I know Levis, you know, could be a bonehead, but you attack the Colts with the secondary. Like I don't care who the quarterback is. Like if if you have the option to hand the ball to Tony Pollard or to throw against the Colts secondary, it's 
throw against the the Colts secondary mm -hmm. for sure. Um, I like the under on Trey Sermon. You know, he, he's mediocre at you know running back. I don't see I don't see a big game from him. I actually kind of like Goodson, the the guy that the, the other guy for the Colts. I was kind of hoping to get a prop on him, but um, uh, all right, Buccaneers and Saints. Uh, <laughs> Baker Mayfield's all the way up to 13 and a half. I like, what was he at? Like three and a half to start the year. Like this is not a running Something quarterback. Like this is not a running quarterback, but, uh, there he is. Uh, Corbin, you've, you've been on Bucky Irving a few times before. Now it's up to 60 and a half. Uh, I can't, it's one of those. I'm going to take my profits from the weeks that I had him at a lower total and I'm just going to run. There's, there's no need for me to try and fiddle around and try and work out if I, I, I think this total is too high, quite honestly. I'm not going to take an under on him, but I think I think they've crept it too high with this one. So, uh, Jim, what do you think? Spencer Rattler. You like him to run? Over 14 and a half. Okay. It's not going to take much to get over that, and he did it in college. I watched all of Spencer Rattler's career. I'm actually a fan of Spencer Rattler. Um, I think this is going to be a little bit too much. <laughs> tuck exactly. and run. Yeah, I, I think he's going to have to have his moments where he does tuck and run. And once we see a turnover or two, it's going to be more, I don't want to force it, let me run. Um, so 14 and a half I think is low. I think he could fly over this with one good play. I agree. I agree. Like one one broken play where the receivers mm -hmm. go deep and he just runs up the middle for 20 yards is absolutely – uh, in the deck of cards for sure. Steelers and the Raiders. Um, there's been some videos about <laughs> Najee Harris and this Pittsburgh Steelers rushing offense and just how really clunky it is. God, the Raiders are awful. God, they're just terrible. Um, I kind of want to take Najee over and then Jalen Warren gets ruled uh, like healthy. So now I can't, uh, I can't do anything with this game, Corbin. You nailed it. Same yeah. thing as you just said. Jim, nothing. <laughs> I love when they put these over half a yards for wide receivers out. <laughs> I, you're literally taking a lottery ticket, but at plus 350, I can think of worse lottery tickets. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, man. It, it's tempting. I'm not going to play it, but God, you are we going to like, you want to get the ball in your playmaker's hands. And because George Pickens is such a head case, uh, sometimes it's easier just to hand on the ball than it is to try to throw it to him. So uh, I don't even care about the stats. That number's nuts. Uh, it probably loses. I'm not playing anything in this game. <laughs> Interesting <laughs> breakdown. It's uh, that's that's weird fascinating. It down there. It's weird. Uh, Chargers and the Broncos. Um, I'm, I actually am not too interested in the yards for J.K. Dobbins. Um, his rush attempts, though, has me a little bit interested at 16 and a half. I just think it's going to be really, really hard to throw the ball in this team, and I think they lean on Dobbins in that running game. I, it's a big number, but I think if the Chargers get up, he obliterates 16 and a half. That's all I got, uh, what I like in the rushing props. This one, Corbin? Uh, so again, same as you. Uh, oh, I nice. don't I don't like their rushing totals this week. I think Dobbins is far too far too high on his total. But again, I don't really trust Herbert and the passing offense that I think they might run it that many times that he gets there by sheer volume. But yeah, I can't do anything else with it. So Jim, and we have Gus Edwards out as well, right? Uh, let me look at the status of Gus Edwards here. Real. I blame the person that, that didn't do the injury report at the start. He's out. Yes, he <laughs> is out. out. He's so out. we have no Gus Edwards, so that's going to help. Now Jake. we love it. Now we. Oh love God, it. J.K. Dobbins getting a full workload. Oh, mm -hmm. this has this has <laughs> the injury written all over it. Sixteen and a half. <laughs> nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Until yeah. he gets injured. His knee stays built and put together. <laughs> this has sprained knee written all over in the second <laughs> corner. No. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Uh, all right. Falcons and the Panthers. I've talked about Hubbard, 63 and a half. Uh, since Dalton's gone there, he's been good. He's mm -hmm. been really good. He's been productive. Uh, he's busting out some long plays. He's gone well over this total, and this is a Falcons team that gives up quite a few rushing yards. I like the 63 and a half. Um, he's the only one getting carries right now. Miles Sanders had two carries last week. Um, I know the Panthers got blown out, but 
I, could they get blown out again? Of course, they're the Panthers. But if it's remotely close, they're just not going to get. They're not going to get away from the running game. They're going to try and keep Atlanta off the field. So, um, I, I, I would. <laughs> who would you rather have in this game? Hubbard over or Bijan Robinson over? Hubbard. Oh, Hubbard. Yeah. It's not even a question. Isn't it bonkers? <laughs> Is that bonkers? Mm-hmm. Just Bijan's not getting it done. Um, I don't know. Corbin, any other rushing props? Hubbard's my favorite. Yeah, Hubbard's my favorite as well. Four straight overs. Falcons 29th versus the run. I, the Panthers need him to run to have any kind of hope today, uh, tomorrow even. So. Yeah. Uh, Jim? No, you guys covered it all. Come on, Andy, you have to talk about the Kirk Cousins rushing. Um, what's your, where, where are you standing now? Okay. So, uh, I, I should have gone right back to Aaron Rodgers under when, cause that ankle injury, Jim, you know, is mm-hmm. th- that's a, that's a real injury, um, that he has, uh, you still got it. You, you can't take him over half a yard. He doesn't, he has negative. He has six carries for negative two yards this year. <laughs> <laughs> like he isn't even getting quarterback sneaks, which <laughs> makes sense. So you're taking the under or nothing. Um, so it, and kneel downs. That's how you get the negative. I was going to say. I, I'm assuming you're expecting a cousin's kneel down to. Yeah, if he kneels down, back a few as yeah, well. if he kneels down a couple times at the end of the game, that's right there is negative two yards, which negates a one yard, you know, or two yard, you exactly. know, QB sneak. But he's not getting, you know, quarterback sneaks at he all. Could, so. He could have to get seven or eight yards, and if they're up, you're going to be sweating <laughs> it out. He could be one more kneel down to go and have two yards, and you're like. <laughs> Just yep. don't back up a lot. Just go to straight down. Please. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what's do they have Kirk Cousins rush attempts? Because how funny would that be is if you could take his under on rushing yards, but over <laughs> on rush attempts because the kneel down the kneel one down. and a half. Oh, can- <laughs> <wow>. <laughs> Same game parlay. Kirk Cousins oh, under half the yard and over. <laughs> We're gonna have to make it at some point just to see what the odds are. <laughs> that being said, he's only gone over that total once uh, this year, but uh, it's in the it's it's it's, it's possible. It's absolutely one hundred percent possible. That would be off, an amazing five percent play. Are Imagine. you off the yeah? Are you off the Tyler Algier bandwagon? You were on it all last year. I feel like he was one of your favorite players. Last year, I, I don't think I've heard you mention or anyone mention his name really this year. Well, what I liked about Tyler Algier last year was that nobody was realizing that he <laughs> was getting as much work as he was because everyone was so infatuated with Bijan Robinson. And <laughs> every game last year, they're like, why aren't they giving the Bijan the ball more? Blah, blah, blah. And instead of focusing on who's getting the ball besides mm-hmm. Bijan, they were focusing on why isn't Bijan Robinson getting the ball. So the value is, you know, kind of gone uh, on that one. 39 yeah. and a half yards is an interesting look. He only had six carries for 12 yards last week. That's against Tampa. Again, you throw against Tampa. Cousins had, what, 500 yards? So, but you look at his previous game, 60, 32, 53, and 21. against the Panthers. Um, his rush- expect- if we're expecting the Falcons to be up, he's the backup. They could quite easily give him a f- little workload to see what he's like. I see he's had six plus in every game so far. I'm just wondering what kind of. Oh my god, nine and a half. Nine and a half. Nine and a half. He hasn't gone over that this year. I don't. No, think. nine is his. Nine is his. But that's, that's a crazy number. They, they have to be expecting them to be up. That has to be what the what the thought process is um, for that one. So, um, yeah, you heard it here. Uh, the, the the Kirk Cousins <laughs> under the under Kirk a half Cousins yard, but over parlay. one and a half. <laughs> uh, <enough>. Two QB <laughs> sneaks at the goal line gets you over that. There you go. Doesn't even have to score. Oh, uh, let's go to the Lions and the Cowboys here. I'll go first. I like Rico Dowdle over forty one and a half. Lions are okay. I mean, they're good. They're good. I'm. Mean, they're not amazing. They're not terrible. They're good against the run. And Dowdle had twenty carries last week. This job is his. And the Cowboys, all uh, they have to get something going in the running game. Going into last week, they were dead last in terms of running the ball. Zeke is absolutely cooked. Um, like, he, he is, man. Uh, so I like Dowdle over 41 and a half. I like his over rush attempts, 11 and a half. I think they're going to have to get going. No, no Brandon Cook, so they just got limited weapons in the passing offense. So Rico Dowdle is my guy. And I'm fully aware that if the Cowboys get down, this play looks absolutely ridiculous. Uh, but for the time being, if this game is close, yeah, give me Rico Dowdle. Jim, what do you think? 
I love David Montgomery in this play yeah. here. Love David Montgomery. Uh, he's the goal line back. I know it's so nerve wracking with the Lions because they trot out onto the field on first down and you're you're looking to see which numbers in the huddle <laughs> based off your bet. And it's just infuriating. Um they need look, to do do you remember Cliff Robinson in the NBA? He yeah. wore the headband mm-hmm. and they asked him once, something to change him. Yeah. Yeah. They asked him why he wears a headband and he was like, he's like, my mom can't really see me on the TV really well. So I told her I would wear a headband so she can see me. That's what they need to do to Montgomery and Gibbs. They look too similar. I want, I want a sign on the sideline where they hold up the number. <laughs> Is it Montgomery's number or Gibbs's number? So I know. Um, I think both of these guys could go over their rushing total. I think they're going to lean on this run game. Uh, Detroit has had a extremely rough time with Dallas. I don't think they beat Dallas. Was it five games in a row? Um, this just screams something that Dan Campbell has on the bulletin board too. Going into Dallas this year, like they're wounded. Dallas is wounded. Mm, yeah. Uh, I think Detroit wants to lay 40 on this team and they are going to run it directly down the Cowboys throats. The Cowboys defense is banged up. Uh, they really, they're not no Dexter Lawrence or uh, Demarcus Lawrence, no Parsons. This is just really setting up to be badly and not for nothing. I believe we had, did we have rag now? practicing this week for the lions. So we very well could see him back. Then that running game gets a huge boost. Love me some running backs for Detroit in this game. Corbin. Uh, well, I'll go for a third one. I love Gibbs. I think Gibbs is the one that goes over out of the three. We mentioned he's over in his last three. His carries have gone slightly up. Um, on par or ahead of the Cowboys. I think the Lions are going to coast here. I think they're going to run the ball. Cowboys 23rd versus the run. And he has so much speed that he can just break these long runs compared to Montgomery. Montgomery is the power back. Gibbs definitely has the speed. And I think he's going to run all over them, quite honestly. Bengals and Giants Sunday night football. Uh, Chase Brown is going to be. I thought Zach Moss was out. But uh, let me let me let me look this up because I I thought they had, had ruled him out. Whilst you're, whilst you're looking that up, I will tell you that the same game parlay for our Kirk Cousins comes out at plus seven fifty. If uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got my interest. Okay, so Zach Moss is going to play. Uh, I like his under forty two and a half. This is a guy that I th- I th- that I thought all week was going to be out. Um, Giants uh, offensive defensive line a little bit better than expected. I still think. We're, I, th- I still think people are overreacting to them beating Seattle, a, mm-hmm. a completely banged up, like horrific defense right now. So uh, Zach Moss under 42 and a half. Uh, no way. Uh, so Chase Brown may be over. Uh, Corbin, you like either of these guys? No. Jim? <laughs> Just take all the unders. <laughs> take all the unders. There you go. I don't uh, see a big running uh, attack in this game on either side. All right. Let's take, go the air. take a look at uh, receiving props. Corbin has said. Doesn't like many receiving. Oh, uh, yeah. Don't like the board this week on receiving at all. Yeah. I'm I'm with you. I just starting with this game, I'm like, I I don't know who <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I, I like London, K Lewis do good, but how am I picking one of these? Yeah, slowly yeah, exactly <laughs> that. There's so there's so many of these games where it's either you don't trust the quarterback or you don't quite know the game script or the game but there's just and then you're like, right, I think this person this team are gonna throw the ball and then you realize that it's Trevor Lawrence or Kayla Williams and you're like, Do I wanna trust them? <laughs> just no. No. So no. yeah, all right, Jim, you like any of these receiving? No, props? not this game. It's a London game. I'm out. Pass on the London game. Texans and oh, the we Patriots. Know where, we know where Jim's going here. Ooh, tell me, Corbin, where am I going? It's gotta be Gibson, Gibson. right? You or do you just like Gibson? You like his rushing and receiving a little bit better. I like his rushing and receiving. I think he's okay. get more of a workload. They, the Patriots might trot in a running back we don't even know on third down to <laughs> take the receiving. So I'd rather take rushing and receiving. Um, I do think that Drake May targets his tight ends. And these numbers are stupid low. 20, <laughs> 24 and a half. Yeah. 10 for Austin Hooper. <laughs> I mean, he had 40 against the Jets defense with Jacoby Brissett. Like 10? Really? <laughs> it's one so, pass. It's yeah. just, who, where's the ball going to go? Kendrick Bourne at 18 and a half. Like, it's one. Drake May is going to push the ball downfield. It might get intercepted. It might not be complete. But I think these numbers are a massive overreaction 
to the fact that it's the Patriots O line, the Patriots, and Drake May. They're gonna let the ball go. I mean, if you add up some of these Patriots guys, it comes out to like 115 yards yeah. or something like that. But his his passing total is like 165. So mm-hmm. I, if we like him to go over, someone's going. One of these guys is going over, probably two or three. But I I can't pick one, Corbin. No, I was just doing a similar thing, but actually for the Texans, I was like Stroud's total wasn't it in like the two? It was in the two hundreds. And I'm like, I, I just added up like Dell and Diggs together, and I'm just like, I'm, and Schultz, and I'm like, where where else is it coming from? Again, I think that I can't take an over on any of them because I think they're going to be up so much that I think the Texans are going to run the ball with whoever it is that still waiting for some numbers on those. But again, I just you you just can't pick. So yeah. Uh, Commanders and Ravens here, uh, again, trying to pick one of these guys. Zay Flowers is going to have a breakout game. I think this could be it. Uh, he's, it's just been – it's been a disappointing start. Obviously, Derrick Henry's been, you know, taking all the headlines and doing most of the damage. But, man, it just feels like Zay Flowers has got to have a big explosion um, coming. And I don't know. This could be it. So, um, I kind of like him, kind of like Terry McLaurin. Uh, if I'm looking at some of these guys that just exploit the bad, you know, the the bad secondaries, like, you know, Flowers had the, you know, seven catches for 111 yards, um, you know, last week that was against the Bengals. An- again, another terrible secondary. So can he do it two weeks in a row? I think didn't even have a touchdown. He has one touchdown this year. Um, it's pretty crazy. Corbin, you like either any of these guys? No, I was waiting to see an Eckler receiving line. I don't think I was just going to check if he was injured or if anything. But I think I think he's practice. I think he had an injury, but I think he's practice. He's he's the one I was waiting to see if there was a line on. Other than that, again, I would rather take Daniels than trying to pick which pick receiver, receiver he's got. Yeah, and then with the Ravens, I think they're just going to run the ball. So I I I, I can't t- tell myself to take a receiving prop on any of them who knows if mark andrews is suddenly going to spark into life or we're going to have a, another random likely again it's just like it's just past for me so jim, but i would like an eckler line if it ever appears so jim uh maybe justice hill uh maybe that's uh it. you can't pick who's gonna be that's the frustrating part you know the ball's gonna go through the air in this game but you have no clue who so yes Browns and the Eagles, they get A.J. Brown back. They get Devontae Smith back, and these numbers are just astronomically high. Corbin, you like anything? Again, it's a similar theme. I Again, I think I just meant I think the Eagles are going to run the ball. So I'm like – so that's where I had my uh, my Barkley stuff. And then I'm like, I think that – I think Deshaun could have a good game against this Eagles. But then I'm like, I don't want to trust – I don't want to trust him. I don't want to try and certainly work out which receiver he's going to. Yeah. So, uh, Jerry Judy is the one that I kind of somewhat looked at, but again, I just, I can't, I can't. Jim? I was looking at Njoku, but he's still popping up on the injury report, so kind of got to wait on that one. First week back last week, I think Watson made a big error. He was open a ton. He just didn't throw it to him. Could be something that on film they go back and look at and say, well, I know you got sacked, you know, whatever, 27 times, Deshaun, but uh, Njoku's running free 15 yards down the field. You might want to let it loose. (laughs) So I think we can yeah. see an uptick in targets for Njoku. I like Goddard it's a bad, under bad secondary for Philly. It's yeah, just, that's don't lie. They lie, but it's a bad secondary. I like Goddard under thirty eight and a half. First two games of the season, thirty one and thirty eight yards. AJ Brown and Smith go out mm. one hundred and seventy and sixty two. Now they're back. Uh, this is an obvious regression spot for for Goddard. I was I was hoping the books wouldn't realize, but. That's why they're the books. Uh, <laughs> Cardinals and I can I could I have one in this game. I can go for this uh, go for Cardinals it. Packers game. Romeo Dobbs under forty two and a half. <laughs> He's just like obviously he got suspended last week from the Island it up, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love I, it. I don't I don't like him. I don't like the guy. Um, <laughs> I'm still not entirely sure he's there mentally. Even if he is there mentally, this total is too high for him. He just. He's the name, it seems, in our offense. Everyone always talks about Dobbs or looks for him, but he's just, he, he just isn't that guy. Like Reed, Watson, Kraft, they're all ahead of him, uh, particularly if it looks like he's had some like bust-ups with uh, Lafleur this week. Just things are not right there, and at this total, I, I would like it even if he was mentally there. If mentally not there, then I quite like the under on him. So. I will say it's quite interesting. Uh, Jair Alexander is uh, questionable this week. Mm-hmm. I actually don't know if he's going to play. It's one of those we're going to have. Uh, I I was more convinced last week, but 
wait and see because if he's out, I've mentioned it before. I mentioned we can't defend the run. Eric Stokes in the back. Oh my god, awful, awful player. <laughs> Just tar- target longest receptions mm-hmm. against us if Jair Alexander is out. <laughs> That's a great look because if That's Marvin Harrison is going to take the top off that defense if there's no Alexander. He is. Yeah. Oh, Stokes is going to run around just looking at the sky. He's going to have no idea where to go. <laughs> Corbin, do you feel the number on Tucker Craft is too high? Yes. Uh, I've. He's he's good, and he's going to get targets. He's going to get receptions. I don't think he's going to go over that kind of total. I, I was so. looking at the under with him. There's a lot of hype. Yes, you know, he's the shiny new toy in the offense that's getting the attention. I think but we under, mentioned under it. We're both, and a half could be. We think that both teams are going to run the ball. We've mm-hmm. mentioned it so many times that, yeah, I, I quite like the under. I, I wouldn't take out. I'd rather take Dobbs, but I like the thinking. Uh, Colts and the Titans. Uh, I will tell you, I, it's terrifying. Uh, but I kind of like DeAndre Hopkins over 41 and a half. Our secondary mm-hmm. is atrocious. And what the, the Titans are doing is they're basically just – when Hopkins comes out on the field, he's probably getting the ball thrown to him. They're not, like, using him on 100% of the plays. It's it's kind of like a – I don't know. It's, he's similar to, like, a third down back. Like, if it's third and six and Austin Eckler comes onto the field, you kind of have mm-hmm. an idea of what's getting ready to happen. So if Hopkins is out on the field, I think they're throwing it to him, and I don't think the Colts could really do that much about it. Um, one catch the first couple of weeks, um, but his last two games, uh, 73 yards and 31 yards. Again, it's just a fade of the Colts secondary. That even, even, even a hurt DeAndre Hopkins, I think, can find some room. Uh, Jim, you like any of these receiving props? Well, we really don't have anybody on the Colts. <laughs> so, <laughs> we so don't know who's going to be quarterback. Exactly. Michael Pittman's back hurts. Like I, it's- I, I want to talk about something. There's, no, there's not a prop out yet, but if I know it's looking like it's going to be Richardson, if you see Joe Flacco enter the game, <laughs> you are live betting Pierce <laughs> props. Okay. Yeah, that's a he good one. loves Alec Pierce. <laughs> loves him. Um, other than that, I'm not. I can't do anything till I know who's playing. <laughs> yeah, so, all we're right. Wait on this one. We'll move on. Buccaneers at the Saints. I will just jump in right now and tell you that I love. Where's his? I wonder what this is going to be. So it's going to be the receptions, uh, and it's going to be Mike Evans under because they have him at four and a half. You have to go back to uh, I believe 2018 or 2017 to find a game Mike Evans had over four and a half catches against the Saints. Marshawn Lattimore and him, huge rivalry, and Lattimore just locks him down. And you've got a healthy uh, Chris Godwin, which I think correlates here. I think you can take under four and a half and over five and a half for Godwin here. Um, Lattimore just locks him down. It's interesting that Mike Evans does catch some touchdowns occasionally, just like when they get in close. Mm -hmm. As far as long passes, it's they just – he locks him down and the bucks go away from him. So Mike Evans under four and a half is, uh, is by far my favorite play in this game. One of my favorite receiving uh, props for this week. What do you think Corbin? I kind of liked Godwin. I, I don't know if you want to chime in on what we said before. He's I've been playing Godwin receptions quite often this year. I had some concern because I went back and looked at their games last year. I think he had eight in the first meeting and only three in the second. I'll let, if you want to yeah, jump God- in that. Yeah, Godwin had a, a – it was it was Godwin's year where he was coming back from knee surgery, and so you're just going to see some inconsistencies when you're coming back. I mean, he had a game with, <laughs> against Carolina, no catches. Two weeks later against your Packers, Corbin, 10. Like, it's just, mm-hmm. kind, it's just kind of like what happens. Sometimes your knee swells up, and it just it, – it's a two year before you're back to – like a hundred, a hundred percent. So like Godwin was a frustrating guy to try and bet on week in and week out because you just kind of didn't know what you're, you know, you're going to get, but this year, very, very consistent, eight, seven, six, six, five, yeah. you know? So I, I, I think he's a much more trustworthy this year because he's a hundred percent healthy. Exactly. Jim. No, you guys covered it. Steelers and the Raiders. I, Cannot figure this one out. This will be one of the easiest yeah. passes. Anybody have any hot takes on the receivers for the Steelers and the Raiders? And <laughs> the we move on to the Chargers and the Broncos. 
I think the numbers receiving wise are lined right in that game. Uh, yeah, I still like O'Connell to go over his one eighty. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you it's probably go somewhere? Yeah, you probably like Bowers. I don't know. All right, Chargers and Broncos. Here's another one. I don't. Mm-hmm. I have no opinion yeah. on Lil Jordan Humphrey. I think the numbers are all really good here. Like, even, I was looking at Lad McConkey because I think he's starting to really get in touch with Herbert, uh, especially coming off the bye here. It makes me wonder if they spend a little bit extra time together. But 47 and a half, I don't know if I'm willing to go that high. Falcons and Panthers here. Uh, listen, if you like Kirk Cousins, Darnell Mooney has has looked really good. Um, Drake London has started to look good. I mean, when, of course, when Cousins throws for 500 yards, everybody mm-hmm. uh, looks good. Um, any of these you like, Corbin? Again, no. I, I I like Dalton to go under, but I can't then pick a receiver that I think is going to go under. Oh, so I can't. Yeah. I can't. I can't do anything with the Panthers. And then I look at the Falcons and I think they could be, They, who knows, it could be a close game with them both fiddling around or they could somehow get up big just like uh, happened against the Panthers last week and then they don't need to throw the ball. It's kind of, yeah, just pass. Uh, Lions and the Cowboys. How about them Cowboys? Um, uh, <laughs> look how many players are on this list again. It's, it's, right? it's so funny. Um <laughs> Uh, I, I, I really like to just, um, give a special shout out for, uh, to Sam Laporta for absolutely murdering every fantasy team, mm-hmm. uh, that he's on absolutely single-handedly just ruining, um, like I know Christian McCaffrey is the, the big one this year, but at least you don't even start Christian McCaffrey. It's not like you're putting him in there and getting a point. Uh, like you've been doing with Sam Laporta, I've never seen. Were well, you going to take his yards under forty-one? Then, um, I, I'm just, I'm just staying away from it. Like, I, I, I probably should because I have him on, on a fantasy team and he's been killing me. So I probably should just take his under. That way, if he kills me again, <laughs> at least I make a little money <laughs> off of it. Um, but uh, uh, this, this game is, uh, th- this game is tough for me. The only one I kind of like is Jalen Tolbert. 45 and a half. Got to believe they're going to be focusing on CD lamb, um, but not getting to the window. Certainly on any of these, Jim, any of these 43 wide receivers or tight ends you listed. Here? <laughs> well, it took him fashion, even though we're talking about wide receivers, I'm going to talk about a running back. Um, what's Ezekiel Elliott's receptions. So two and a half yards. I was just looking at his yards. I just pulled up his numbers. He he's had a zero one and one receptions the last three weeks. So Man, um, his one and a half. They don't even have him. Uh, <laughs> I was looking for one. I was looking for one <laughs> because I know he's screaming about touches and all this stuff, and it's just a okay, catch. Zeke. I don't care if it loses ten yards. <laughs> you know they're gonna give him one. All right, Zeke, get out there, show us what you got, and he's gonna get <laughs> one catch for minus five, and I'm gonna say, okay, go sit down now. There, <laughs> you got your, you got your corner on your Thanks. beat up shoulder, so. All right, let's move on to the Bengals and the Giants. No Malik neighbors. Uh, do you go back to Wandale at 55 and a half? I kind of think I it I, I think it's the most popular like play mm-hmm. in this game. Like Wandale's like I what I don't know. We need a name for it. Like, what's the play that everyone thinks they're really sneaky playing and then it turns Losing out everybody's play? all everybody's Losing. on it? <laughs> Losing play. The the Jordan Mason. Yeah. On Thursday night football, um, yeah, Wandale's the only one I'm I'm really interested in. Maybe Chase Brown thirteen and a half because I just don't think Zach Moss is going to play as much. Um, but uh, yeah, Corbin, you like any of these? No, Jim, Mike Gesicki over nineteen and a half. I have that one circled. Mm, okay, all talk about Higgins and Chase and Higgins and Chase, but very quietly, Mike Gesicki has worked his way into a pretty dangerous weapon in this offense. And he is a talented tight end that could easily get this on one catch against a giant secondary that I believe safety wise, coverage wise is weak. So they're good tacklers, but I think they're a little bit weak. All the attention is going to go to chase. Nobody's going to double team Mike Gesicki. They got to put attention to Higgins. He could be wide open down the center for a big game. All right, let's get into uh, some alt lines and same game parlays. Yes. Uh, do what to remind everybody we do have our NFL Week Six best bets pack up. We were two and zero last week. Lowered the volume. Uh, nice little sweep last week. Two and zero. We're having a fantastic year. <laughs> we're nine and one on plays since uh, since Monday. Uh, Corbin, you're a big part of that. Uh, sweeping the board in uh, darts plays. 
I'm um, hoping to finish strong with NFL plays this week. We already have one play that is up at the time of recording. Probably add one more, maybe two. Um, but we're going to go low volume again and uh, just hope for a nice little 2-0, and 3-0 sweep. So take uh, take advantage of that, wt.buzz slash al over at wagertalk.com. All right, Corbin, let's st- start with uh, Alt Universe. Shout out to you. You sent me two of the grainiest, most <laughs> pixelated screenshots I've ever I I, ha- I actually sharpened these up. This oh, is God. the best I could do. <laughs> let's uh, let's just talk about the play. Ignore the screenshots, guys. I'll I'll, I'll read. I'll read. So uh, uh, we have. <laughs> that looks like old NES. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> <Guys>. <laughs> How far away was the phone? We <laughs> I did. I was expecting you to type it out, not copy and paste it in. My, my apologies. I will get a 4K crisp Thank image you. for you next the week. Audience make sure deserves, the audience deserves better. I'll, I'll, I'll make sure to <laughs> emphasize it as I read this out. So it's Dalton <laughs> under 250 passing yards. Um, I mentioned I like him at his normal total. This gets us an extra, I think it's about 28 yards here at uh, Falcons eighth best versus the pass. He's gone under the last two. I think he might have even gone under this total in uh, all of them except the first game. I'm expecting both teams, including the Panthers, to run the ball here. And every quarterback, including Carl, who hadn't gone under the 222, have gone under this total. So that's everyone against Falcons under that total. Uh, we have the Ravens over 20 and a half team points. Uh, speaks for itself. They've scored 41, 35, 28, 26, and 20. And the commander's defense is not great. Um, they gave up 37 to the Bucks and 33 to the Bengals. I think the Ravens could have a good day both throwing and passing the ball here. And then we have uh, the Packers uh, over 16 and a half. I love, I love these plays when it, these totals when it's 16 and a half. Basically, two touchdowns and a field goal gets you this. So they've scored 24, 29, 30, 16. That was the game that Love didn't play. And 29. Cardinals have given up 23, 42, 20, 10, and 34. So I love all of that together. Wrap it all up for minus 118. Nice. I really like this one. Yeah. Yeah. This might be my favorite one so far. That's a great one. That's a great one. Uh, speaking of the Packers, let's jump here real quick uh, to do inside the trenches. Jim, you're going to talk about the Packers. What's going on with their? We're about to bash my team again here. I sense it's not. We're going to go to both sides of the ball. I got something nice to say and something mean to say. You want the good news? (laughs) Um, (laughs) let's let's start with the good news. The good news. The good news is this: the the Packers' offensive line has had to adapt and change this season with the Jordan Love injury. They've really had to go in and change the way that they ran their pass blocking scheme and the run blocking. You know, they've kind of chugged away in the run blocking. They get a decent push. The numbers are okay. But where I've been impressed with the Packers is their pass protection. And I think a lot of that also is aided by Jordan Love. Jordan Love is absolutely great at not taking sacks. He's no problem getting the, rid of the ball. We speak about, we've been speaking about this all season. It's like every quarterback does not care about their completion percentage anymore. They're not taking sacks. They're throwing the ball away. I think that this Packers O-line and their quarterback and the offensive scheme have really started to gel from a pass blocking perspective. And we've seen the Packers be able to really light it up through the air. They're going up against the Cardinals. I don't see any kind of big threat from the Cardinals to make this all of a sudden look like a JV offensive line. So I love where the Packers are going offensively. Uh, can I Alan, can I jump in yeah, and ask a question right before we jump onto the? Do you so uh, I know I don't know if you've got sacks coming up in the next slide. I don't know if you've got any this week. But do you would you look to take some Cardinals under their sacks against like Love? Would I know traditionally you do oh, like mm-hmm. two have half a sacks or over? But would you look the other way? Potentially, I would look given what way. you just You're... said. You're, You're going to have a very nice surprise oh. in about five seconds, Corey. Oh, okay. I may, <laughs> I may have just spoiled what's you coming. Know, okay. You're, you're 100% right, and, and that's part of what we're talking about. You have to pivot. You have to pivot if the numbers are not adding up. If a prop is not working or a market is not working for you, you have to change the way you're doing things, and that's what we're going to do going forward. Um, good job, Corbin. Now I'm going to give you the bad news. Your rush <laughs> defense is atrocious. I'm not telling you anything you did not know. I think they are absolutely lost from a rush defense perspective. The only quality pass rusher that they really have is Rashad Gary. 
I could see James yeah. Conner having a day against this Packers defense. And until the linebackers can really step up and assist this mediocre defensive line in stopping the run, I don't think we're going to see anything different. So I think we can ride this Packers rush defense for the rest of the season. Yes. All right, Jim, let's get to the sack props. You're going in a completely (laughs) different way this week. So no, no, this is, this is really important. Like too many times I think we uh, aren't quick enough to pivot away. Uh, from things that work, and I would I would use the uh, the UFC new gloves mm-hmm. as an example. Like it's very obvious that knockouts are down, and they are. It turns out since they've introduced uh, the, the the gloves, not, there's 13 percent less knockouts. That's a lot. Um, fights are going longer, and if you're not pivoting away from that, you can get lost. So, Jim, talk about what's been going on with sack props this year. So it's it's been one of those years where it's just not happening. Like the names, uh, you're getting these random sacks late from backup players. And I wonder if a lot of it just has to do with today's day and age of social media and name recognition and brand recognition that how could you miss Chris Jones? How could you miss, uh, you know what you have to do as an offense. You have to eliminate these guys. We've seen these outlier games. TJ Watt with a sack and a half. Max Crosby with three. Uh, who was it that had five? Hutch, uh, Hutchinson had one like game five. of five. <laughs> he's done nothing the rest of the year. So if you bet Hutchinson every game this year, you're thinking he's got five sacks. You're one and four. It's <laughs> <laughs> wild. At at juiced numbers as well. So here's where we went this week. We're going to experiment with this. This is going to be a small play for me. It's not going to be a client play. I just want to see if this is going to start to work out. First of all, we selected three linebackers where the numbers are offered. I chose linebackers because not every single play are they going to be rushing the quarterback. They are going to be in pass coverage. And if a team does not blitz, they will not be there for the sack. The other thing is these three guys combined only have three and a half sacks on a year. Okay. So we put these three together. It gets us to minus 123. In looking at these game scripts, I expect Carolina. Well, let's look at it. Levante David is going up against Spencer Rattler. That's the one I'm worried about the most. Quay Walker going up against Kyler Murray. Quay Walker's not catching Kyler Murray. Yeah, Corbin, could you agree? <laughs> yes. Yeah, he's got yes, no yes. shot to catch Kyler Murray. <laughs> Nicobe Dean has looked absolutely lost in Philadelphia and been under major fire. He's not playing well. So I think you could put these three together for a small play at minus 123. I, I think it's the point in the season where we have to start looking at players to not have a sack instead of the other way around. I like it. I like it. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a great, it's a great way to look at some of these, uh, sack props. If something hasn't been working, try to figure out what does work and then, uh, and then move from there. Uh, Corbin, let's wrap up with your <laughs> grainy ass. <laughs> See the lines of the computer screen. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's not the quality oh of the, gosh. of the still frame. It's the quality of the play. That's uh, right. so we're, exactly. we're, we're exactly. looking at the lions and Cowboys. What do you like? Okay, uh, we've explained this earlier when we delved into this game, but uh, the Cowboys are definitely weaker than last year. They're starting on offense and defense. They've only cu- so the Lions are plus seven and a half. Forgot to mention that. Um, they've only the Cowboys have only covered the spread versus the Browns. We obviously know the Browns are struggles. Very different team to the Lions. Lions have only lost once this year uh, by four to the Bucks in that close game, and they really need to the wins to stay with the. Minnesota at the minute because they are flying. If they ha- want any hope of winning the division, they have to they have to just keep winning. Uh, them to cover seven and a half seems great to me. And then uh, the running backs, we I, I mentioned I like Gibbs. Jim mentioned he liked Montgomery. I like both of them to go over these alt totals. So uh, Gibbs needs to get forty plus uh, forty or more. Montgomery just twenty five or more. Obviously, I I lean to the Gibbs more than the Montgomery, but you could easily flip it the other way or have both of them to get 40 yards at a better price, quite honestly. Cowboys run defense is 23rd in the league. I'm expecting both the Lions running backs to run almost all game. Uh, Both hit this total in every game this year and all the head-to-heads last year. Uh, I just love this play. Wrap it all up together and get minus 138. So Love it. Love it. I think that's my favorite same game parlay you've had this year. I love all the I agree. Yeah, check my favorite. Oh, and my favorite same game of the year. So there you go. Love it. Love it. So. Hey, Corbin, 
gentlemen's hey, bet on the Lions game? Ooh. I know what you're going to say. Ooh, what is it? Montgomery versus Gibbs. I'll take Montgomery. Oh. Take okay. I'll take that. Loser has to do the other guy's segment next week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. It's good. It's good. Sure. Sure. I. I'll go for it. I'll go right. for it. Corbin, you have to give us three <laughs> sack props. <laughs> you have to give us the same Just do the opposite leg. to what I say next and week. Jeez. We'll do That'll our be... real. Then we'll just do our other ones. Joke. <laughs> That'll be great. Yeah. That'll right. be great. That'll be Have crazy. a bet. Um, I- I've made an executive decision. We're not doing best bets at the end mm-hmm. of the show. Uh, there's several reasons for it. One, I have two breakdown videos that are up on Wager Talk. I uh, gave you a best bet on uh, bet on it. And the fact is we talk about all of them and all of them and all of them throughout the show. And then at the end, try to pick a best bet. I think we end up putting out plays that we maybe don't hundred percent believe in. Um, and we want our best uh, to be, uh, to be, you know, out there for everybody. Um, so our best bets are, are for clients and that's what we're, you know, kind of known for, but there's plenty of, uh, of ways to try and take advantage of some of the information, but we're not doing best bets at the end of the end of the show. Quite frankly, mine have not been that good. And I know it's great content for the hindsight haters uh, to, to check the bets after the fact and then post uh, comments, but I just don't feel like they're, they're that helpful uh, to everybody. So this video is more of like, Hey, here's our thoughts and here's a bunch of information. Do with it what you please. If you really want to know what we are putting our actual money on, uh, you know exactly where that's at. Those are the plays over at Wager Talks. So, and we're having a great year, plus 147 units. I think that's 148 after yesterday. Um, so, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, our goal was 100 units this year. And now we've moved the goal to 150. So hopefully we can get a, get over that, stay there, and maybe maybe catch a late late heater and uh, creep up to 175. But uh, coming off of a 2 a week feels really good in NHL. So I think we get – or uh, in NFL. So – Looking to be uh, dialed in even better this week. So, all right, that's going to do it for it. Thanks very much for joining us. Don't forget to hit the like button. If you have not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that now. And Corbin, what's the code word to put in the comment section? Nail. Nail. N-A-I-L. Appreciate you guys. (laughs) Uh, Good luck under your bets, and we will see everyone later. Good luck. Good luck, guys.